My warm greetings to all, and especially those of you in the Kingston Episcopal area of the Diocese of Southwark. In the midst of all the day-to-day -day coping, the pandemic is forcing us all to think about what really matters in our lives. It is taking us from our moment-by-moment -moment concerns about how to live and structure each day in lockdown to the really big questions about how we understand ourselves and our place in the web of life on Earth and in the vastness of the cosmos. This ability to glimpse the eternal and the heavenly in the midst of the mundane and the everyday was captured in some words of the poet and artist William Blake, who, incidentally, was married in St Mary's Church, Battersea in 1782. He begins one of his poems with these words. To see the world in a grain of sand, and heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. Many of us will have experienced something of this in the last year. We've been reminded very sharply about our own mortality and frailty, and there are many, many families carrying great grief and lament in the light of death and serious illness. We're more, than, more aware than ever of the importance of our mutual care one for another, and how important it is that some of the deep divisions and inequalities in our society and world are healed, and how much of that begins with small acts of kindness. We're learning to appreciate more and more our relationship with our environment and the natural world. There's the extraordinary achievement of several successful vaccines in a very short space of time, and that's testimony to the central role of science in our world today, both its enormous possibilities, but also its limitations in our search for real understanding of how we're to live well. For Christians, there are real questions about the future of the church and how we're to be church and how our Christian faith speaks to our world today. Today's readings speak very powerfully to all these central questions of our lives. They lift our hearts and minds to the big picture. In Colossians chapter 1 verses 19 and 20, we're told that in Christ all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven. This gives a truly cosmic view of ourselves and our lives. At the heart of the Christian faith is the understanding that the deepest reality of all is the God who is the source of all being and love, who is our beginning and our end. I believe there are many good rational arguments for belief in God. It makes good intellectual sense. But in the Christian faith there's also the idea that God has revealed his inmost nature in the life and death and resurrection of Christ. It is here that we see God's saving love and purpose for all things. In John chapter 1 verse 14 we read that the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And then in verse 18, in the same chapter, we hear, It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This speaks to us about the primacy of self-giving love at the heart of God and of all creation. In focusing on Christ, we find out who we truly are, that is, children of God, created by love and for love. This is a faith which embraces our hearts and emotions, our minds and our bodies, and guides our actions. It is what can steer us and guide us through even the most challenging of times. Learning to live by faith and trust in God is all about living in right relationship and growing in love. Right relationship with God, the source of all things, and God's love which surrounds us at every moment. 
even though we pay little attention often, to, God is always there to embrace us. And living in right relationship with ourselves, our weaknesses, our fears, our worries, as well as our hopes. Learning to know that we are loved and valued by God. We are God's children. Learning to live in right relationship with each other. The pandemic has shone a bright light on many of the inequalities and injustices of our world. We've learned afresh the importance of valuing one another and working together. We know the need to work for a better and fairer world. And also learning to live in right relationship with all creation. Most people now are very aware of the dangers of climate change and the loss of biodiversity. But action in these matters is not simply a question of human self-interest, but rather an understanding that God's love and salvation embraces all creation. The pandemic and the lockdown have undoubtedly made us think about all the details of day-to-day -day life and the importance of the little things each moment and how to cope each day. But perhaps through this, we are also learning to look at the biggest picture of all, to which today's Bible readings point us. The understanding that in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether in earth or in heaven. In the 14th century, Mother Julian of Norwich, who knew quite a bit about lockdown, having lived much of her life enclosed in her cell as an anchorite nun. She had a profound experience of the all-embracing love of God in the midst of a time of great suffering and uncertainty, with not only the Black Death, but also the political and economic turmoil exemplified in the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. In the midst of all this, in one of her visions, she saw the world like a hazelnut held in God's hand. And she said, which shall last for ever, for God loves it. She had a profound sense that whatever the pain and chaos and uncertainty of our lives, in the end, all will be well. And that the all embracing love of God will carry us through. So as we move through this pandemic, let us pray that we will all see in the experiences of our lives the light of that all-embracing, self-giving and costly love of God made known in Christ and the hope that it brings to every situation. <laughs>